We're live for number 17. Welcome back, Jason. Here What's we up? go. Let's do it, man. Let's talk the favorite, the favorite the favorite hot topic of real estate agents, right? Need more leads. Uh yeah. I mean, talk about it every day, all day long, for sure. I mean, like you said, leads are the lifeblood of your business, right? If you have no leads coming in, you're going to eventually have no business at all. So if you want to be successful in this game, I mean, you have to figure out how to get leads, how to convert leads, you know, strategize about them, all, all kinds of different things to talk about all things leads. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you want to get real estate agents in a room, tell them you'll teach them how to get leads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, I think. I think there's a lot of BS around leads too. Um, so a lot of, or let me put it this way, a lot of misconceptions. So I think, I think, you know, for me, it's about demystifying some of the mysticism that's in there about lead generation or lead leads, just getting them. So, you know, what is a lead? Um, you know, what, what would you define a lead as? Um, you know, so, I mean, I've been digging into this pretty deep and, you know, the lead's just a person, right? Um, you know, could be anybody, right? But what you want to have is, uh, you know, kind of uh, engaged leads, right? Somebody that's actively working with you. So the way that I, you know, I was just describing it uh, yesterday in our team meeting was, uh, you know, think about cold outreach or warm outreach right? When you're talking to somebody and he's a stranger on the street and you just walk up to some random person, right? That has no idea who you are and you're trying to break down that barrier, right? And it's the, the conversation is like, you know, as soon as somebody, as soon as somebody you don't know, that would be cold outreach, right? People that you do know, friends, family, think about the people in your phone, people in your email, uh, people on your social medias, right? That would be all kind of warm outreach. Everybody else would be cold outreach, right? And like my example, when I'm saying, you know, you're going to have a different message to different people. So if you are meet somebody randomly out on the street, that's going to be cold outreach. They don't know you. So what you got to kind of do is get your get their guard down to get more comfortable with you and build that relationship so they'll be more open to talking to you. But a long-winded first answer, but uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, lead is just a person that may, may or may not be interested in what you're looking to sell them. So there's cold and there's warm, there's an unengaged and there's engaged. I So I like the simplicity and it's probably it's funny as much as I've dove into this, I've never really thought of it like as, you know, cold is if their guards up, warm is if their guards down, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and engaged and unengaged um you can have warm leads that are unengaged and you can have cold leads that are engaged um you can have sphere of influence in your in your database that you don't talk to um or send any value uh, or homes or and so they're unengaged right and you can have names and numbers <clears throat> in your in your database that are engaging with the homes you're auto sending or the the, the value, but their sales guard is up because you haven't spoke to them as a human being, right? So, you know, I think that's, I think that's, that's good. I think warm and cold and unengaged and engaged, but at the end of the day, a lead is a name and a number, like that's a lead, uh, mm -hmm. how far it is, you know, how, how warm or cold or how engaged or unengaged depends on, you know, cold, cold and warm is, are you talking to them, yeah. you know? How interested or uninterested, do they make any kind of response? If you're getting no response, kind of the way that we classify them is, you know, cold would be you're reaching out, reaching out, call, text, email, and you're getting no response. Warm, your call, text, email, and, you know, they might respond to you here or there, you know, um, might get some information and you're building that relationship. Active, I would say, would be more of, okay, you, you built up that relationship. You might be taking them to go see houses um, or, sh you know, getting them further along through the uh, the sales cycle, right? So, and then, like you said, under contract, closed, and then kind of the circle of life, right? 
and uh, rinse and repeat and kind of kind of keep it simple that way. That's that's how I've been training it. That's kind of how I learned it. Um, what's your thoughts on that? So I, I have I know where I'm going with this, but what's what's been your best lead source over the years as as real estate agent and team leader? Uh, so when I first got started, you know, and I was a brand new agent, I'm like just thinking like, oh, my broker's just going to give me people to work with, right? And I'll take these people and I'll I know, did. Re ready to buy houses and that's it. And it was like, hey, Mr. Broker, you know, I'm ready to, you know, take people, show them houses. And then it was, uh, you know, kind of, kind of a wake up call, right? It was uh, one of those things where it's like, that's not how it works. And it's like, right. well, how does it work? And, uh, you know, the, the message that I got back at the time was like, well, if you want leads, you got to, you know, you got to pay for it. You got to go to Zillow and then sign up for Zillow and then they'll send you leads from there. I'm like, well, fuck, that sucks. I'm cheap, man. I don't, I don't want to be paying for leads. So, so, you know, I, I was doing IT stuff and all that kind of good stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I got to figure out a way where I could find people that may or may not be interested in looking to buy or sell houses. Right. So keep it simple. You know, so how did, how did I do that? Um, you know, so there's a bunch of, uh, hold on a second, my phone just blown up. Um, real time radio people. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, I developed a couple different ways to, to uh, find leads for free, right? So there's a couple different ways that I did that. I mean, online is the best way to do that. But one of the first easiest ways that you could do, I call it like driving for dollars. You know, if you're looking and you're driving, uh, you know, and you see a distressed house, maybe you can stop and see, you know, maybe they don't have the money to kind of keep fixing it up and make it appear good, right? So you can talk to the seller, see if they're interested in possibly selling it. Or maybe that, you know, try to find the owner and contact them to see maybe they're out of state and they just aren't taking care of it or well hang hang tight there because i want to go so let's say you find the distressed house you want to find the owner's contact information yeah how how okay good question right so there's a couple different you know there's whitelist that you can buy on the uh, that has people's you know contact info uh we have a site called rpr where we could look up the address and it'll tell you the homeowner and a lot of times it'll have a phone number associated with it you know? how do you rpr like unless i'm an agent and i don't know what rp is like, rpr is what is what is rpr they should know this but I, I yeah think a lot it's don't. Just like an nar uh provided website that kind of has all kinds of different like value for an agent if you don't know what rpr is with as an agent you're definitely doing yourself a disservice i mean a lot don't a lot of them don't you could do CMAs with it, analysis. It'll tell you, uh, you know, just different demographic info, school district ratings, uh, crime ratings, all that kind of stuff. As far There's as a mobile app too. Yep, mobile app. But uh, I like to use it as a stalker. I like to find people's information and call them on it, right? Or you know, a lot of times when I'm get, gathering listing information, when I'm putting in a new listing, you know, it has a lot of the the deed information on there, tax information on there, ownership information, you know. Uh, you go by Chad, but your real name's like Elwood or something like that. You know what I mean? You got to have Elwood in all the docs. So then conversation starter, right? But, um, and not that that's your name, just so uh, everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, it's but, okay. um, you know, a lot of times it'll have that, that information on there. So I'd use that site, you know, to get expired listings, you know, anything that was canceled or withdrawn or anything like that uh, from the... Uh, from the MLS and I, I generate leads that way. Just call them. And a lot of times, you know, agents make it too complicated that they think they need like a super fancy script for, you know, uh, call, call them for like expired listings or something like that. My, my script is this. Hey, Chad, I saw that you're looking to sell one, two, three main street and it didn't work out. Are you still looking to sell it? Right. Yes or no? Well, how'd you get my info and all that? I mean, look, at there's different objections. You know, hey, it's all public info when you're looking to sell your house. The owner information's on there. I grabbed your information, um, found your number online, and, you know, just figure I'd give you a buzz. Look, I'm not trying to sell you a car warranty or anything, but if you'd like some help trying to sell that house again or whatever, let me know.
Well, and I think that's the thing is when, like you're talking for one of years from when you started, you, you know, you had, that's the thing. It's like, when, it's almost like better, you know, I, I think all agents have been challenged over the last six months. And, you know, I think there's been a lot of, um, yeah, I know we have, I have, my team has a hundred percent. We've had some challenges we've had to go through and I don't, you know, it's not shared enough, but that said, I often look back to the beginning. I'm like, what the hell did I do back then? That was like, it just, you know, you forget a lot of the, the Rocky montage. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I look back and it's like, well, I had nothing to lose back then. You know, so I did whatever it took. And and even though you think you'll do that now, it's like, well, no, comfort sucks sometimes because, yeah, yeah, it's comfier to sit in my my nicer home that I have now than I did back then, where I had to solder the pipes or we weren't getting a shower that night. That was just the first house we bought in the first <laughs> week, but, but but it was real. I had like when I bought that house, I had to solder the pipes or we didn't have running water to that shower that night, so I had to learn how to solder. Right, like you know, you're more dangerous when you have nothing to lose. Is is the type deal? Um, both thinking a shower and for lead generation is what I'm talking about. But, you know, and I, and I think what, what you look at is like, you, you figured it out. Um, but we start BSing ourselves at these other levels, I think is what it is. Cause, cause lead generation, like you zoom back out, like, you know, all the ways, like almost everybody knows. All, and if you don't use a quick YouTube video, watch this podcast, like, you know, open houses, cold calls, internet lead generation, sphere of influence, networking, like door knocking, cold calling, like I said, cold calling, but that's it. Like, cause I've already run out. Cause like th there's, that's the buckets. Like we, a lead is a name and a number. Well, and let's... you go down and you, you've, you've pick a strategy like you did, which is effectively door knocking slash cold calling or a common, you know, you know, and then you sprinkle in the fact that it's a, it's a niche of distress, distressed properties. Right. And you went down and you figured that was a bucket and you did, and you, you drove and you saw an opportunity is what it was. And you're like, okay, how do I, how do I get this person's info to create this opportunity? Okay, I'm gonna white pages or RPR. Okay, cool, solve that. And then you get that. And well, what script do I do? I don't need a. I just need a. I need a talk track or I need talking points. And okay, I got them. Are you still looking to sell your house? And then you have a conversation, and then you move it forward. Like that's it's that simple. Uh, all the complication that comes out of these processes. Cause, cause they're all the same, like open house, you hold it, you get the name and the number, you have a conversation. If you vibe with them, you move it further. If you get their name and their number, you engage them and you know, you give them value and then you create conversation and it's just, it's the same thing. It's a different game. Yeah. It's that simple. All the complication that we put and I am guilty of is from our avoidance of the simple things that are required to move the needle in that area. Like, shit, I don't want to stand in the open house for two hours or shit. I don't want to call somebody when I found their, I found the house, but I'm scared to call. So I don't <laughs> want to know how, or I don't know what to say. So I don't want to figure it out by learning. Like we yeah. ride a bike, yeah. fall off the bike. So I know I went into that, but like when I listen to you, like it's, it's simple. Well, Two things. One, first, uh, I did a, uh, a video, seven ways to generate listing leads for free. So, I mean, we don't have to go down the weeds on each uh, source. If anybody wants that, just hit me up. I'll uh, definitely share that. Uh, no cost or anything like that. Um, second thing, I think what, what a lot of people need to kind of understand is like the whole philosophy of leads, right? What you're talking about is say if you have leads coming in as a funnel, right? So at the top of the funnel, they might be a little bit colder, maybe not as interacting, right? Maybe you're getting Facebook uh, marketing leads or Zillow leads or Google pay-per-click leads, right? They might not be interested. They may just be looking, right? They might not be ready right now. So those are the type of leads that you need to nurture, right? And kind of work a little bit longer and kind of just keep providing value, showing your interest, um, not be that agent like, hey, oh, you look in the boy with little house today. You know, everybody likes my uh, my dumb voice. Uh, but um, anyway, so as you're on the top of the funnel, you know, it might take a little bit longer to uh, convert these leads because they might just not be ready yet. And as you're go, you're talking about different strategies like your sphere might be a little bit closer. You know, maybe a little bit warmer because you could interact with them a little bit more. And then people that are actively looking for uh, homes, like say, you know, 
like I tell uh, the team members, if you go to an open house and you're working the open house, that's actual people that are looking to buy right now for that same style of house. You have a couple different conversation starters as one, you know what area they like, you know what price range they're in, you know how many beds and bathrooms that they need, all because well, they came to your your open house. They're kind of giving you a lot of information that you know that you can work with. So they're yes, but 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 now. what you said about sphere, the sphere isn't necessarily um, that they're that they're more warm. They're just their guards down. Yeah. Uh, but they're not as necessarily engaged. They might be early in the process too. Like, you don't, it's sure. just, you know, yeah. yeah. My, but, maybe but, I said that wrong. You know, the more top of funnel might be a little bit more colder. And then as we get down towards the bottom of the funnel, you know, and that sphere would be a little bit more warm outreach to people. Right. So but I think, I think what you said earlier, like that, I think, I think I got, I think I unlocked something on this is that it's what scale of cold and warm is it? And what scale of an unengaged and engaged is it? Because you take open house, it's still cold to you because the, the sales guard stuff, they don't know Jason and trust them. And you know what I mean? But they are more engaged because they're engaged. They're at the freaking house. They're taking action, looking at yeah. homes in person. So they're definitely more engaged, but they are cold. Whereas Sphere is definitely very warm, but it could be unengaged. It could be engaged as well, but it most likely is unengaged. Uh, they're not taking action, you know, but they are warm up to you. So like, I think that's like, that's the two indicators is cold and warm and unengaged and engaged when you look at these sources, but, but you can continue. I just wanted to point that out though. Cause I think that, I think that's really going to be my new uh, indicator of what, what level is the lead at is cold and warm and unengaged and engaged, but go, but go ahead with the well, open house. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Like you said, open house, they might be just more along the process where they're getting closer to making a buying decision. Right. And all we're doing is trying to help, you know, people overcomplicate it. And it's like, Hey, look, at, there's people out there that need our help that don't know the first thing about buying or selling a house. All we're doing is looking to provide that help to them. Right. So, I think, like I said, with fancy scripts and talk tracks to get people from cold to disarm to, you know, warmer and engage, you know, I think people overcomplicate it a lot, you know. Well, just... they think there's a magic fucking pill. I don't know what else to say. I mean, they think everybody thinks there is that script that turns people to you. I mean, like, well, this other person gets a bunch of people from this, so they must have magic words that work better than I have. Or this other person generates leads that, convert so they must have a magic source that i don't have or this other person has a sphere of influence that just rocks so they must have um, a magic um personality trait or something that i don't have. like they all this you know and at the end of the day we fall because we because real estate agents want somebody who was ready to transact buy or sell falling in their lap saying jason i couldn't wait to talk to you thank you for being here as a person and I've been stalking you for months and I just couldn't wait to call you to buy or sell reels. And like that just doesn't exist. But yeah. we watch the highlight reels and think that it exists. And then marketing is another problem because I'll help you do this without giving up anything at all. And it's false promise and I'm full of shit, but you watch my ad and you think that it's real because it's taking up your mind space as you scroll down through your feed. And like, so, you know, all that stuff is because agents think there's magic that just doesn't exist. Well, you know, like two, th two things on that. One, you know, you always have, well, you must be lucky, right? That you did what you did. But, and then two, I don't agree with what you just said because we do get those calls at this point in our careers where, hey, now I'm ready to either buy or sell. And I'm just waiting for the once I was ready to call. But that comes with time and that comes with proving yourself, right? Right. And, right. You know, well, but it doesn't, there's no button you can press to just turn those calls on. There, by, and by button, I mean there's no lead source you can pay to get those calls. Yeah. I think Sunit posted it the other day, Sunit Agrawal. He said, you can't pay somebody else to do push-ups for you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like you cannot pay. Zillow is not going to drop leads in your lap that know who you are. And are ready. Like you're right that you can get those calls that are the easy buttons, but that's from somebody who did the work, got their name out there, put their, you know, made themselves aware uh, that they're a real estate agent. So yes, those exist with the work 
put in to get that does that make you understand like so sure. but, but unless, yeah. we, we literally like just uh, we just uh literally talked on this uh point so i'd say if you're a new agent just starting out um and we just literally did this as a team yesterday so you might see some videos flying around but you know we had an agent that just joined the team he was an agent for a couple of years six people that he knew bought and sold houses and didn't use him as an agent because they didn't know he was right so we just came out and just said hey look at that's not going to happen to us right as a team you know so what we did was a simple jab to our database Re the the heading subject real estate nightmare dot 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 right you know so, and then inside inside the uh inside the body of the email we put it all together as a team was you know the story eight six you know six people wanted to buy and sell and you know i don't want this to happen to me and then we fil each filmed a video right that had us explaining the same exact si situation so just so you know if you don't know, like like uh, Biggie says, if you don't know, now you know. I'm an agent, right? So get getting that word out there, right? So the first thing to do is not be a secret agent, right? Let people know what you're doing because if they do need somebody, and then they're like, "Oh, I didn't know you were an agent," you're gonna you're gonna be kicking yourself. Um, and it's Jason, funny. I don't I don't do social media. I don't I don't post on social. I, oh yeah, the uh, get comfortable getting uncomfortable, right? You know, I always tell everybody I have a face for radio and you see my mug on uh, social media all the time. But like I said, you know, it's part of my business plan is to be more out there, right? And be more active. You know, I had an agent yesterday. She's like, you know, I'm not doing a video. And I'm like, look at, keep it simple. Keep it short and sweet, 30 seconds. Just say exactly what we just talked about. You know, get yourself out there, right? Same person that did that, and I hope she's watching right now because same person that did that, I took a picture of a, a snippet of her video on uh, on Facebook and said 288 views. I get I go now 288 people know that you're an agent now. Great job. And I be, I bet I know who it is, and, and if it is who I think it is, her video. I was I I've spoken to her before, right? I think so. Okay, so I was. I was impressed with the um, – some people who have a more natural skill set to video than others, but guess what? You get – I quit college because of public speaking, and I'm on a Facebook Live doing this. So cut the shit. You can get better at it. But she was very, very good on it because I watched it, and, it, you know, it stuck with me. So, so, so you know. She's awesome. a photographer. I go, you're a photographer. Right, She's like, I'm on the other side of the camera, though. I'm like – well, you got to get comfortable getting uncomfortable, right? And that was the message uh, this morning, that and follow up, because here, here's another thing to go down the rabbit's hole, right? So, you know, when you do have people that are engaged and you're not willing to keep making contact with them, and there is another agent out there that does, you're going to end up losing that business. Had a team member today? Yes. $600,000 listing. Too scared? Too nervous to follow up more than one day in a row, end up getting uh, getting beat out by another agent, right? So I mean, there's, I think our own ego gets in the way a lot of the time, and we're like, well, I don't want to bother them. It's like, well, if you take away bother and say, hey, look, at, I'm looking to help them, and the quicker I can help them, the quick, the better off they're going to be, right? You know, so get rid of the ego and get into the weeds with it, and just like, you know. Too often, you know, you sit on the sidelines, don't take action, and then you end up losing out on business, and it's all fault of your own. Well, names – so people that come in, if they are inbound and they clicked on something or something, if you talk about that, you know, it, it's it, – when's it – you know this – if you don't know, you should know the statistics. If you don't follow up within the first five minutes, the percentage of your chances of, you know, getting the – in contact with them and converting them go up, like, ridiculous amounts. I mean – like five minutes versus 30 minutes, there's like a 30 times difference in conversion rates and all the, all the stats that could go. Yeah. Right. Why is that? Like, so, so take the stat, but then dehumanize it. Think about it. Like if you click, I'm interested in something and the average site time, I think for people to be on a website is about three minutes. So it could, you know, like you think about it, they're clicking on a few homes and then they're on to the next one, just like you do. So think about it in your case, if you're on there now and you're in the mode of, thinking about homes now 
you're more receptive to have that conversation. You're in tune, you're locked in with it. As opposed to 30 minutes later and your kids are going nuts and chaos is happening in the house and somebody calls, you're like, I don't know, I got shit going on. I'm not thinking about it. That's exactly why the stat exists. So like when they come in, they're 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 in the mode. So talk to them when they're in the mode. Their, their guard's going to be less up whenever they're considering and compl- com- ah, contemplating, geez, the process as opposed to 30 minutes later when they're all they're thinking about is like how do i get my kids to chill out right now it, it, it's just an example i'm just trying to humanize the, you know what i mean so that's why speed to lead matters you know but then you take another stat and you go the average contact attempts to get them to convert is like 12 to 14 and this is not just real estate this is across all industries it takes 12 to 14 contacts touches to to you know get a sale so to speak or you know a conversion so why 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 give up on attempt five you know and i don't know what to say well start providing some value so you have something to say you know like did you get the thing about the thing did you get my email about how to avoid the construction on your way to this place you know because it's a pain in the butt right now and i know i deal with it every day when i drive there that's valuable give them a tip did you get the thing about the thing? Did you get the news about the new hockey rink that's going over here and what it's going to do for that area? Yeah, it's going to add more traffic. But in my opinion, I'm happy as a homeowner because our values will go up because there's more interest. For sure. For sure. Um, you know, different people find different things different ways. And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes they'll click on realtor.com. And they're looking for houses and then they'll think, well, maybe, you know, and then they'll click on the house and fill out their information, goes to an agent somewhere, right? But then they might think, well, maybe there's more houses on Zillow. So then they go to Zillow and then they'll search. And then they might just go to Google and search, hey, houses in Tampa or whatever it is, right? And then it's like, they could be filling out forms for multiple different sites. And by the time you reach out to them, it's like, well, where'd you go? Or how, how why you bother me? It's like, well... You know, it's not bothering. You, you, you filled out some information on one of our affiliate sites on, you know, looking for a home in Tampa. Just wanted to see if you needed any help on that or to find what you're looking for. Oh, I'm just looking. Great. What did we find? You know, did you find what you're, you know what I mean? So kind of just having that conversation. So here's, here's the thing too. So, so a lead is a name. It's a human being is what a lead is. It's just a lead because they indicated in some way, shape or form whether they were at an open house, they responded to your mailer they answered your phone call on a cold call or a door knock and they, they showed some engagement towards moving further down your pipeline however it is so here's a quick stat four or five million homes sell in the u.s almost every year you know obviously we've had a big drop last year but they went from five and a half million to 4.1 or two four or five million sell there's 330 million people in the u.s i'm a bit of a math nerd but i'll do it for you So if you take just say 5 million divided by 332 million people in the U.S., that's 1.5% of people will will transact. That's pretty much just proven every year, year over year. So guess what that means? Like if you get just 100 people in a room, one or two of them are going to do something this year, right now. Now, some sources, maybe you have indication that that's why you have 3% conversion rate because they clicked on homes they're interested in. Some have 7% because, you know, they were at an open house. So some have different, but take like the math, 5 million sales divided by 330 million people in the U.S., 1.5%, one out of 100 will transact. So get names and numbers and you know one out of 100 are going to do something. So you provide the value and have conversations and don't push and you'll find at worst one out of a hundred if you're, you know, communicating that you're an agent and you provide value that will, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that, that's the, that's the game. Like take all the BS out of it. Yeah. And that's the game. I think, uh, you know, we always circle back to uh, real estate's a numbers game. Everything else is just drama. And like you said, uh, you know, how many times do you make a call, nobody answers, and then you never call back again? But, you know, kind of what I've been telling the team is like, maybe people like to communicate in different ways. 
you know, be respectful of somebody and say, hey, what's the best way that you want uh, me to call you? Would you like me to call you? You want a text? You want an email? You want me to send you a fucking pigeon with like a little uh, paper rolled up in, in its little plot of, like sent to you? How, how, how would you like me to communicate? Right. Because if you're not calling, text and email, you might not hit be hitting them on that media. Right. So if you're not hitting them where they're at, how are you ever going to start that conversation to begin with? And then when they do respond, your response time, this is the you know, I didn't I can't stress enough how many times over the years, whether it's through our marketing agency or through our team or, or, or through agents I've coached. They don't like they get a response from a lead, whether it's and a lot of times it's from these damn drip campaigns. Like, I don't mind drip campaigns because if I get a response, I'm like, move everything off the desk. I got to respond immediately. Like, you know, you know, unless I'm on a podcast, I'm on. It's, not happening. it's happening. Right. I'm like, I paid for these leads. I got to respond. Yeah. But agents get leads that respond to an automated thing. Just like, you know not interested at the moment, maybe in three months, you know, and they don't respond back for five hours, six hours a day, 12 hours. And that sounds crazy, but I cannot tell you how many times mm -hmm. I have seen that. I mean, you've got, you've like, if you're a human and you've had somebody bothering you for six months and then you finally go, all right, I'll, just, I'll reply to them. And they don't answer you back for like shit, an hour. Even you're like, yeah. you know, they don't care about me. I'm just another cog in their wheel. Yeah. Um, we could go down the rabbit hole on this, but um, what do you think about the, you know, the speed to lead time and then being a part-time agent where you might be working a regular job and not be able to uh, reach out to people in a timely manner? I mean, yeah, I don't want to, that, I don't, I don't want to we, could, we, we could open up a can of worms on that, but like you said, Think about it as, you know, I don't know why I keep using this analogy lately, but, you know, like dating, right? If you're trying to, uh, you know, go out with another person, right? Whatever. You make contact with them. You ask them out. You're trying to develop interest. You're not going to ask them to marry you on the first date, right? You're trying to build that relationship up. Too many times, you know, agents are like, you know, oh, you don't want to buy right now? Okay, bye. You know what I mean? And then, like, you, you never even tried to develop the relationship or, you know, kind of see what they're looking to do, right? One of the biggest questions I always have is, like, hey, how can I help? What are you looking to do? Right? But it's I, – I don't know why I keep using that analogy. But if you if you, if you you don't respond to your date, right, and your date's reaching out to you and you're not responding, are they going to find another partner to go date, right? Yeah. But, uh, I mean – I like the analogy. I don't know. Nikki might no, it's, it's it's totally it's I, I I heard it from I think Jay Kinder the other day. It's like uh, a lot of agents are it's like walking into the bar and slapping a girl's ass before you buy her a drink. It's like that's the same thing, but it's like, man, that's a little bit more in your face and it makes a little yeah. bit more sense. Um, because it, that's what it's like. It's what a lot of agents do, you know. Um and you know, but to, to, to back to the part-time one, you know, that's what I really don't think, like I tell everybody anymore, like, look, part-time. Okay. If you're doing it to pay the bills, but you better have a pretty serious inclination towards a, a, a jump point, like where you will take your leap of faith and, and, and go full-time because you, you see all the agents, you see a lot of them, you know, I'm sure a lot of us know some that sell three to five a year, you know, some year they sold eight because some more of their friends bought and some year they sell two because some less of their friends bought and they just sit around and they look at the agents that sell 30, 40, 50 and they wonder how they do that full time. They'd love to do that. I'd love to quit my job and go full time into real estate. Well, you can't because you, because of what you just said, like you cannot be, if you have a, a full time job and you have leads that need that response and you can't get to them because of that job you're you're not going to you're not going to get the numbers you need to to make your lead generation profitable like so you're just going to be stuck at whoever you attract um through yes your sphere, and, yes, and that has yes a limit no. i mean yes okay. and no so how how i started i was part time right i was just looking for investment properties for for myself and figured you know hey i'll uh maybe sell a couple houses a year and that'll be my vacation money. And I was cool with that, right? But then as it started growing and, you know, business started going, 
you know, I think you could do it as a part-time agent because two, two factors here. I always say, if you have your W-2 income here and your real estate income down here, my things are off, but uh, you know, you want to kind of get that real estate income close to your W-2 before you make the jump, right? With all kinds of different ways that you get paid in this industry and all that kind of stuff and the, and the longevity and only getting paid when it closed. So zoom in, you were full time as you had real estate as part time and a lead responded to you. Did you answer it? And how quickly did you? But that's the thing. That's where I was going to go next is like you have to kind of have that availability. When your phone rings, you got to answer it. Right. So I was lucky enough where I had a job where I worked from home so I could answer it. You know, but if you are, you know, right. your phone is away and you're nine to five and you can't answer that phone, that's when you might be running into some trouble. Right. But that's the, the ones that, that, that have that or just like literally like might not even have it, but they compartmentalize their brain. You know, when I'm at my my full time job, my focus is there. And when I'm outside of it, I'll do the real estate thing on the side. And that'll work because I'll still put four hours a week uh, you know, like it's not real. It's not very likely that's going to work. Um, and well, and about the society that we have, right? Everybody wants everything immediately, instant gratification, and all that kind of stuff. If somebody wants to go see a house today and you don't answer your phone, they're gonna. And like you said, they go on a different platform and click, you know, call agent or whatever. They're gonna find another agent to get what they want, right? unless you either set boundaries or say, Hey, look at, you know, I could show you after this amount of time or whatever, but you know, a lot of these houses, especially in competitive markets are going quick, you know? So if you're not available to show, they're going to find somebody else that who, who is, I mean, that's one of the perks on kind of joining a team is that, you know, if you don't have availability to do showings at certain hours, you know, you could have somebody on the team kind of help out. Right. So. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the thing when you come and you look at part time, it's, I always say money doesn't care. Money doesn't care that you're on vacation, that you're sick, that your kids have this or like money does not care. In fact, I think money almost punishes you more when you (laughs) do things that you should be doing, like attending a funeral or a wedding or a, you know, a kid's dance recital, like money wants to just like punish you for, for, I don't know. It's, it's, it feels that way. You ever, you ever, if you're a real estate agent, you know, if you take a vacation, you know, all your leads will come out of the woodwork. Um, but, um, you know, I think that's not acknowledging it. It's, it's just a, it's, it's a, you're just servicing yourself. Like you've got to acknowledge the realities that people want stuff fast. They need response. They don't care about your personal life. Like when you put yourself in a world where it's like, well, that's more important than like, yes, it's more important to you personally, but it's not going to make you more money because you, you know, you don't set up systems and processes, people leverage accountability tools to make sure that you do the things that you're fighting against the grain. It's, it's, you know, it takes 14 contacts on average to get a sale and you only do two. It, it speed the lead increases your conversion rates 30 times and you don't care. You take six hours. You know, like don't fight against the grain, like be aware of what that people want things now and be as good as you can. You won't be perfect, but be as good as you can at doing that. You know, like, yes, I'm on a podcast right now and I got squirrel mode. My phone's on do not disturb. If a lead spot responds right now, I don't know. But the rest of the day, for the most part, depending, I'm not with my kids or doing anything tonight. The moment a lead responds, the desk is getting wiped and I'm right here. <laughs> you, you know? like Yeah, yeah no, for like, sure. I uh, I do not have my phone on Do Not Disturb. So I keep uh, – I have squirrel mode because I keep seeing the thing go off. And I'm like, <laughs> oops. So – well, I think I think it's important that uh, you know people know the numbers. I think it's important that people realize that you know it is a numbers game, and you know how do you increase your success rate is by increasing your activity, right? So if you know that you have a three percent, three out of a hundred percent chance of converting a lead, and you're only making ten calls a day, you know what's your success rate going to be? Like you posted about uh, a new agent on your team. He made 90 calls in a day. Do you think his activity is going to lead to more success or less success? He's finding those three a day in one day where it's taking you 10 days to try to find those three. 
it's, and this is the same. It's I I know this is about leads, but it's it, this was made aware to me in the same way, and I think this makes a lot more sense. You know, people wonder how a younger person got farther than them. Like, say, you know, they're 40, 50 years old, and there's a 30 year old who's achieved more financially or whatever. You know, and they wonder how. Um, you know, well, that's the decision making process, and this is the same thing because you, you've got to lower your barrier to take action, like the action threshold. You've got to lower that. Uh, and that's a decision-making threshold is why somebody who's maybe done something more than you in less time. I mean, there's, there's, you know, various reasons and it's a complicated subject, but in general, if you take a month to make that decision, right. And I take 15 minutes, I'm making, you know, in a, let's, let's say an hour, let's say an hour in an eight hour workday, right. I'm, t I'm making eight decisions and that you compound that over the month, right. I'm able to make, 100x your decisions you know in a month and that's yeah. that's exactly why some people are able to leapfrog ahead of you in less time is because their action threshold is lower than yours so i, I know that was like different but i think that's important to see because when it was explained that way to me it made sense um yeah. Yeah, it makes sense and I, i'd say if uh, you're an agent that's struggling right and you're, you you don't have any leads i'd say it you know, one thing that was helpful for me was put it in your calendar, right? If you want to work out, you know, if you schedule that time, okay, every day at seven o'clock, I'm going to go work out, you know, and then you see it there and now you get, you know, more likely to do it. Um, same thing with lead generation, schedule that in your day, you know? So, you know, I was just talking to an agent about this yesterday, but kind of this goes back to atomic habits where you kind of like chain, chain together wins. So, hey, you didn't like to work out, but you worked out. Now you feel good about yourself. Now set up your lead generation right after you work out. So now you're still on the high from achieving your goal, working out. And now you're hitting your lead generation. Now you're setting your day up for success because you're getting a couple of things that you hate doing out of the way early. And then the rest of the day is going to be great because you're already going to have that high that you accomplished two things that you didn't want to do uh, when you didn't want to do them. And now you, they're already done. So the rest of the day is it going to be a win. It's an amazing feeling. I, I like the, you know, the hunt in the morning, eat in the afternoon, because and, and your day will roll downhill if you do that. Because, you know, we we've implemented prospecting ten to twelve Monday through Friday with the team. So two hours a day, five days a week, ten to twelve. Not, um, get on there. Generally, we need a minimum of an hour, but we prefer you to be on there for two hours. So that's what we do, and I do it with them. I, I, we're actually in another tab. I can see my team here right now on Google. So we're, you know, on Google Meet. So anyway, the point with that is. Since we've implemented that, I, you know, I have two, and it's funny how afternoon a lot of replies come because people are at work when we're reaching out to them, or you know, they got stuff going on in the morning, and then one o'clock hits and they respond to that attempt, that call, text, email, or whatever the voicemail you left, and it's it almost feels inbound, you know, and it's it's like I, I when it happens, it does feel inbound because at that time it is inbound, but I'm like when it happens at two o'clock and I get a reply. I'm like, thank you, morning, Chad. Like, thank you for yes. doing the work because <laughs> now I can, I have something, you know, like yesterday. So yesterday's a good one too. Uh, I, I made 46 attempts and I got nobody. I got squat, goose egg. It was terrible. But two or three o'clock hit and five leads revisited my site that hadn't been on it in two weeks. I get an alert for that. So, you know, and then two of them texted me. Uh, well, I sent out a text to one, but then the anyway, two responses. So, so because of that, yeah, forty six, no luck. That sucks, right? But then later in the day, I'm like, oh, people are revisiting my site and they're texting me. I feel good. Well, it's because I did the forty six times. So mm -hmm. it may, you know, you let your day roll downhill. If you do it at four, five, or six o'clock, they you're just I think decreasing your chances too because they may not. They may not respond. It, you know, people get busy as night, and then the next day happens, and it's like your mind resets. And, you know, I think your chance is lower. Granted, it might be easier to get them on the phone at night sometimes. Is the only exception I'd make for that. But um, I, I like to hunt in the morning, eight in the afternoon. It's made a big difference um, for us. And we really yeah. actually haven't had a ton of trouble getting people on the phone. Actually, yeah. um, well, here, here's the thing, right? And I'll I'll, I'll end the my part of the show on this, right? You always hear, well, when's the best time to call? And it's like, as soon as you can, because right. here's what you're going to do. You're going to procrastinate 
You're not going to do it. It's going to get to the end of the day. You're going to have, you know, your willpower and all that kind of stuff to do tough activities is going to be down and you're not going to do it. And then you're going to say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do it. But if you don't have a set time and you don't get that work in, you're, you, you know, your chances of success are going to be lower. Plus, you know, like you said, all that opportunity to fall back up with you, if you get it out of the way in the morning, you're getting these calls in the afternoon and then you can kind of build your schedule around that. 100%. 100%. So, I mean, I'd say, you know, to, to finish my end of this one, you know, two things, you know, if you need leads, it's not as hard as you think. Don't overcomplicate it. Find a way to get name and numbers that make the most sense for you. Name and numbers, name, well, an email, whatever, name, phone number, email, and I'm, you know, whatever. Find a way to do it. You know, there's, you know, the ways you already know them. And if you don't go look up a YouTube video or just listen, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send you in the chat, the, uh, the link to the one that I did seven ways to generate listing leads for free. You could kind of backtrack that for buyer leads too, if you're not comfortable working with listing leads, but it'll give you a good idea, um, you know, where to start. Right. And it's all free. I don't think there's a magic one because there's not like that. Let me yeah. tell you from 10 years of experience in real estate and chasing them. There's I've, I've almost tried almost every one you can. There's no magic one. They, you know, some are further down the pipeline, but there's no magic source. So get names and numbers. If you don't have them, once you have them, you probably don't need more because you probably aren't working your current ones enough. Like, Unless you can show me that you've contacted every single one of your leads at least 20 times in the last 12 months, you probably don't need more leads. You probably need to work the ones you have better. Uh, <laughs> For sure. So, I just had a conversation with a team member too. I'm like, he's like, I gave him 50 leads. He goes, well, can I get more leads? I go, well, what'd you do with the ones that I gave you? You know, and it's like, you know, if you're, if you're not actively working these, what are you going to do with the other ones? You know, so... We didn't, we didn't say that, you know, having 2000 leads is the way you sell, you know, having 2000 leads in a month is how you sell real estate. Although I mean, I'm saying it helps, you know, with one contact attempt, we didn't say 2000 leads with one contact attempt is the goal. We said that it takes on average 12 to 14 contact attempts before a sale. So keep that in mind. It's more contact attempt. And that's one of those things, man. That's one of those things where it's like, I get it. And everybody gets it. But then you go inspect the work and they don't do it. And that's that's the thing. It's like, yeah, I'll do it. And then they do four attempts, you know, over the next 30 days. And, well, you know, mm -hmm. what's the next thing I got to look at? And, yeah. and um, it's a shiny yeah. object to make it easier, right? It's not easy. It's a lot of work, you know, you just got to do it. And that's why the person you're envying that has converted has converted and you have not. Sorry for a little bit of tough love, but I've been there too. And I always wonder, how's this person doing this? And I'm not. And it's because they've stayed the course longer uh, than you have. So mm -hmm. stay the course. Get comfortable. Get uncomfortable. You know, do the dirty work, all the mundane tasks that, you know, are needed. They're not flashy and exciting, but doing the hard work every day is going to make it happen for you. I just threw that link in the uh, chat if you want to put okay. that in the comments or whatever. Uh, and then anybody that wants to uh, watch that, go for it. But uh, yeah, there was a little class that we did on it. It should post there, I think so. So there we go. Yeah, we got it posted. It looks Pretty like it goes out. Just for watching. All right, man. I gotta Appreciate go. Pay, I gotta go pay Uncle Sam. I got a meeting with the the, the tax guy today. So uh, I'll I'll leave it like this. Realtors, here's your tip of the day. Every time you get a paycheck, because you're not a W two employee anymore. Here's your tip, 30%, take it, put it into a separate uh, bank account, savings account, and then use that money to pay your taxes. Too often in this industry, you know, I see agents that are struggling and it's like they get behind on their taxes, get behind on all the stuff because they don't put the money aside ahead of time. As soon as you get that check times 0 0.30, throw it in a separate account. You'll thank me for it. If you don't owe all that much at the end because you write stuff off like a smart agent, uh, you know, guess what? That's your vacation money. So when you're on vacation, think of Uncle Jay and you can tell me that uh, your tax money uh, just took you to fucking Bermuda or something. <laughs> Love it. All right. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for tuning in.